I know Dominic from uh, uh, whatever Coco Heads, uh, probably, and and different stuff. And so I'm really really excited uh, on on this topic, which everybody is, which obviously is very deeply integrated in any iOS developer, not, which is testing. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so, my talk is about test-driven iOS development with Swift, as you can see. Um, and my feeling is that we, we as um, developers, don't test enough our code. Um, uh, it's just, yeah. And what I want to show you here in this talk is um, how easy it is to start. Um, sure, there are, uh, there are um, code or there are patterns you you want to test, they are difficult to test, but the starting of uh, uh, adding tests to your code is quite easy. And this is what I want to show in this talk. <coughs> this talk, I will just give you enough to follow the live coding, then I will do live coding, and afterwards I will discuss what are, you, what are the advantages and disadvantages of testing. And um, uh, afterwards, I hope we can discuss what you have seen in this talk. Um, so let's start it. Um, you need essentially only three rules to start writing tests, in this case test-driven development. Tests, you first write the test, then the code. The three rules are from Uncle Bob, Robert C. Martin. I think most of you know him. He's very famous, has a great blog, has written many, many um, books. And the three rules are the first one, you are not allowed to write any production code unless it is to pass a failing test. The second one, you are not allowed to write any more of a unit test than it is sufficient to fail. If your test doesn't compile, it is a failing test. And the third, if you, you are not allowed to write any more production code than it is sufficient to pass the one failing unit test. This is all you need to remember when you do test-driven development. We will see what it means when I um, uh, go to the live coding part. Um, following, following these rules, you get the workflow. The workflow is red, green, refactor. This is the, um, the, the abbre abbreviation of it. What it means is in the red, you have three phases, red phase, green phase, refactor phase. In the, green, in the red phase, you write a failing test and you have to make sure that it, edit, that it is actually failing. So you have to prove to yourself that you have a failing test. It's not enough that you think it might fail because the code is, isn't there. You have to prove it to yourself. Yeah? So you have to run the test to make sure it fails. <coughs> the green phase, you write the simplest code you can think of that makes this one test pass. In, in the most IDEs, it's shown with a green bar or with a green check mark or something like that. So it's called the green phase. And in the, so in the re refactor phase, you improve the code you have written or all the other code you already have, but without failing, without um, introducing bugs that would fail the other tests you have in your test suite. <coughs> and this is all you need to know to start writing tests. Um, uh, and, and to prove that, we will go just do it. We just dive right into the live coding. It's a bit scary because yesterday I was so, um, I, I got courage from the uh, keynote and I decided I do it in the Xcode 8 beta. <coughs> so I hope everything works. So I have here an already working application. It's a small application. We have chosen an existing application because most of you already have applications. It's easy to, to, to start test driven development when you start a new application, but you already have applications. And now what I want to show you here is that it's easy to add tests in a test driven way to your existing application. <coughs> so afterwards you have no excuse anymore. And um, what this application does is it's just you get, a, you get a table view and on top you have a search bar Okay, we have to wait a bit. So on top of, of it, we have a search bar, and when you get in, you put in some GitHub username. And 
nothing happens. Oh, he's, oh boy. So this is unfortunate because I want to show how you add um, tests to an existing application. So, <laughs> ah, okay, slow. So uh, we will see because I have to use asynchronous tests and I don't want to put in there a long waiting time. So, okay, we have a kind of working application, kind of. And um, what I want to, sorry. So what I want to add, I want to add, first of all, you see, we don't have any testing at all. So we don't have a test target. So we just have a, a, an application without tests. So we start by adding a, a test target. This is quite easy, this is the easy step. We let just leave everything uh, as it is. And now we have here our first test class. And Xcode adds a test class which is kind of useless because the test class has the name of the, of the, of the application and at the end the tests. Um, I don't want one test class for all my application. Uh, application. I want the test class for one specific part. For example, the table view where I, where I show the, the users. So we add another test class, just for this case. <coughs> and it's called users table view controller tests. So we have a new class, and now we can delete the other one. And I tend to remove this because it's just noise. And I also tend to remove the template tests. If you haven't seen any test cases or test class before, Xcode provides you with uh, four methods when you, when you start one. The first is setup. In the setup method, the test suite or the, yeah, the, the test no, let me rephrase that. The setup method is called before every test method you write down there. So when you have to do some setup for your tests, for every test, you put it into the setup method. Then you have a teardown method. There you can do cleanup uh, after every test method, <coughs> if, it, if it's needed. And down there you have two example tests, but I do nothing special. So, um, and also I rarely need the teardown so I'll just remove everything here. And um, what we, when, we, when we look at the application, we have a search bar which is set in the view did load. Let's add a test that there is actually a search bar. And if you have set the search bar like this uh, in code, then you uh, might remember that you have to set the height, otherwise you don't see any search bar because the height of the table view um, the, the table header view isn't set automatically. You have to do it yourself. So let's write a test that we have a search bar that, had a, that has at least the height of 30 points, for example. So um, a test is actually just a function or a method, a method in the test class, and it has to start with the word test. This is, this is the way the test runner knows this is the test I should run. And we want to make sure that the controller we are trying to test in this test uh, class has a search bar that is um, at least 30 points uh, uh, high with a height greater than um, okay, I have a different. Oh. So. The, the, the test method name is kind of 
telling you what is going on in this test. And you should do this in your test. You shouldn't do, uh, you shouldn't name your test test one, test two, and so on. Because if it fails, you want to see exactly, uh, as fast as possible, what this test is supposed to, to, to test and what this code is supposed to do. And now we just get the search bar as a, um, a UI search bar class and uh, then check if the height is at least 30 points. So I use the guard let here. And now I need something where I can the, get the, the search bar from. So um, first of all, I could use this here in this, uh, uh, could, could instantiate, um, um, no, I, I could get an instance of the class I want to test in here, but this is usually done in the setup code because I have to create this instance for every test. So I add here um, var SUT. The SUT stands for system under test. And this is done um, because I do it because uh, I can easier, easier understand what's going on in this test. Uh, because when I see something like view controller, blah, 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 I don't know if this is what I'm actually testing or if this just used in the test to, to test something else. So SUT is system under test and I always can read the test um, easier because SUT means I want to check something on this, on this what, I, what, what, what SUT is referring to. So it, has, it should be a user table view controller. And you see, it's not in the autocompletion. This is not the fault of the sometimes crazy autocompletion of Xcode. No, the, the, the problem is the user table view controller isn't public. Um, and to access, this, access it out, outside of the target, I should, I, I should have to make it, or I should make it public, or when I test, I can just add the keyword testable and then I can import the module. And when I do that, I get the user table view controller in my autocompletion. So with the testable keyword, I get access to the internal um, classes and methods of the module I importing there. And uh, you, should, you should do this because you don't want to make everything you want to test public. Normally you just, uh, it's enough to have it internal because it's only used in one module um, and therefore use the testable to get uh, access to, in, to the internal methods and classes um, of the module you want to test. And in the setup method we instantiate, um, we get an instance of the tail view controller. And um, this um, thing we want to test here is a view controller. And for view controllers, you know, when you put it onto the screen, you already, the, the, the system already calls some um, methods for you. For example, load view, view did load, and all that stuff. And you want to trigger that in the test. You, you don't want to call them directly. You can trigger that by accessing the view of the SUT. Doing that, you trigger load view, view did load. And when you see here in the user table view controller, we set the search bar in view did load. <coughs> so we want to trigger view did load in our test. And I trigger this in the setup method so it's triggered for every test. So I want to get the search bar from the table view. No, sorry, table view, table header view. And I, is, I want to check if it actually is a UI search bar. And if, if it fails, I want to have the, that the test failed, fails. So I put into the else of the guard, XCT fail. And this fails all the time. So Whenever the code reaches this point, the test fails. And this is what I want to have. I want to check if the search bar is there, 
If it's there, I want to use it in the next line. If it's not there, I want to fail. <coughs> and if you, rem if you remember, in test-driven development, we want to have read a, a failing test before we add the code to make it pass. And we already have the code. What we do here, we just comment it out. The application still compiles. It still is working, but it's missing a feature. And I want to add a test that tests that this search bar, that this feature is actually present. So after the guard let and the search bar is um, accessed from the table header view, I can check that the height of the, the, the search bar is at least 30 points. And I use another ICSI assert method here. And it is assert greater than um, search bar frame size height 30. So what this does is it asserts that the height of the of the search bar is greater than 30 and it is it, and if it isn't it fails at this point so let's run the test yeah it fails at this point because we have commented out all the code that puts the search bar into the table header view so let's put it in again. Only the one that makes, uh, that sets the, uh, the, the header view. And I run the test again. And it still should fail because we don't set the height. Yeah, it still fails. Let's see what's going on. Now we get a search bar, and it is of type UI search bar, but the height is not 30 points. So we can go back to the code, remove the comment here, and now we should have a, ta uh, a passing test. Okay, great. So now our code is, is uh, tested. This, this part of the code is tested. Um, I get a, a green check mark here, so it's the green face, and now I could refactor. Let's assume I have also tests written for the other part, for the placeholder and the delegate. I won't do it here because I'm not that much time and I tend to do all those live coding um, too long. So let's assume I have tests for this as well. Now we can refactor. Let's say I don't want to have this, all this code in, 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 in this place, I just want to call a method that sets up the, the search bar. So I create a method, set up search bar, and I put in here all the code. And now I've refactored my code, I have to run the tests again. And you might, uh, you might have seen that I've a, that, I, that I've missed to call setup search bar in here, so the test should fail. But this was on purpose to show you that now we have the test that tells me that my refactoring was wrong. I have to uh, get to the code again and add the setup search bar call here. And if you run the test again, it should now be green. Test succeeded. So we now have a test that makes sure that we have a search bar in this special controller. Let's move to something very, very more awful than what we just saw. This is code. I don't know about you, but I have written code like this. What you see here is this is the delegate method of the search bar. And when the search bar um, button, the search button is clicked, it creates an NSURL, or in this case only URL because it's Swift 3. It um, gets the, the data from the, the network, creates um, or gets the JSON um, from the data, then 
uh, creates or gets a dictionary for, you know, just make sure that it is a dictionary, get one item or one sp specific um, content of this dictionary, cast it, and all that really bad code, bad, bad code. Don't do this. It's just for demonstration purposes, but I know I have written code like this. Um, so we want to refactor this code, but we want to have tests that help us to refactor it. So we, would, we, we like to add tests that make sure that this functionality still is there um, when we try to make it better. <coughs> And one thing here, what we have to remember, this is an asynchronous call. So here this is called on another thread and maybe some seconds later. So we have to add an, an asynchronous test. <coughs> let's, get, let's get back to the test class. And we add a test that search call, no, search uh, fetches users. And asynchronous tests are done by using expe expectations. So we add a search expectation. And this is a method on uh, ICSI test case. So we can just create the expectation like this and call it whatever. In this case, search. Um, next, I want to what I have to call in the test is this thir thir search bar search button clicked method. Uh, unfortunately, I can't trigger that the search bar does it um, by himself, so I have to uh, call this method myself. But this method gets a search bar. So in the test, I create a search bar I can put into this um, method. just a uh, plain search bar, and I give it a name, a, a, a text it should use for the search. And now we need a way to um, get into the call to the um, GitHub API. So I want to get notified in the test when this is happening, when the, when, when the asynchronous call of the dispatch queue is calling reload data on the table view. And one way I can do it, I can add um, completion handler in here, fetch completion. This is of type just uh, closure without any arguments. And it is optional because I don't want to set it in my production code. I don't just want to set it in the test. And we will remove it when we have refactored all that code. I won't, I won't be able to refactor all that code in this session. But um, this is just to help me during introducing f tests into the code and afterwards we can throw it away <coughs> when we have a test suite that tests all that stuff we want to test. So and now in the dispatch queue, I want to add this fetch completion and call it if it's there. So if there is a closure called fetch completion, I just call it. And in the test, I have to compile right now because the test otherwise don't get notified that there is new code in the controller. And in the test, I can now say, OK, the SUT fetch completion should be just um, a closure. And that sets the search expectation to fulfilled. This is needed because at the end, I want to uh, wait for this expectation to be fulfilled. And it if, if it is fulfilled, I want to test if um, actually that happened what I expected. So now I call the search button 
button um, click method with the search by have created locally. And now I want to assert, no, wait a minute. I want to wait for the expectation. And as the, the connection, internet connection was quite low, I put in here um, a timeout of 10 seconds. At home, I used three seconds. So um, should should be less than 10, but let's see. OK, now um, when the, the, the wait out for the wait for expectation is called either when the timeout is over or when the expectation is fulfilled. All the expectations are fulfilled. I have um, put above this wait for expectation in the same scope. <coughs> and I get an error. And I want to make sure that the number of um, the number of items in the table view are, are the, the number I expect from uh, the search term I use for the, for the test. So table view, number of rows in section zero, I expect it to be two. This is also, um, so I need to call it a self here because I'm in a closure. Um, this is something that can break when during my um, refactoring, some, some, someone makes an, an, an GitHub account with a name that would, would be returned from the search, I get an error here. But it's just for a few minutes to get the, the refactoring started, and then I would remove this, this uh, test altogether. It's just to guide me while introducing the, the test. OK, um, as you remember, this should fail at first. So we need to change the code to make this fail. So I remove the reload data call of the table view. And let's run this. You might have to wait 10 seconds because, for the, because of the timeout. OK, it failed. It, doesn't, it, it, it didn't fail because of the, um, the timeout. It failed because what we got was 0. What we expected was 2. So we have a failing test. We want to make it green. We go back to the code and remove the comments and run it again. Oh, still. OK, this, this time we, we went into the, the timeout. I'm sorry, I have to. Uh, <laughs> so the inter internet connection is a bit um, strange in this. Uh, why does it not work? Let's call IT. Sorry? Yeah, we could, let's call IT. Let's call IT. Yeah. I hope you have some time. <laughs> okay, still fails. Um, because, no, now, yeah, because of the timeout. And, okay, nevertheless, let's move on. We don't get it to work right now. Okay, what, the, what are the next steps? What I, what I now should have when the network works is that I have a test that makes sure that the existing code does work, does do what it does. Um, because I'm checking if the table view has the expected number of rows after I have, it call, I have called it the, the, the search with a, with a text um, I defined in the, in the, in the test. Um, what I would do next, so what we want to have is we want to have a class which is responsible for doing all the network calls. So in the, we, we leave the test here. This is, this is the test that helps us to make sure that whatever we do, this actually feature keeps working. So we add a test that makes sure that the function, uh, the, um, that the, the search calls a method on, the, uh, uh, on, a, on a class that is responsible for doing the, the network requests. 
And I call it, let's see, can you see, no, I have to. And I call it um, calls load users. This is just a method I think should be, or this should be a good name for, for a method that loads the users from, from GitHub. And um, again, I get, I, I use a local search bar for the test. And, oh wait a minute, this is strange. And I uh, use again the same te text for the search. And now I, um, what I want to have is, I want to have um, a way to inject um, a dependency. As you have seen here, um, when we rely on the network, we get a, a test that sometimes fails and sometimes sometimes works, even though we didn't get it to work here. But um, what we want to have is we want our unit tests not rely on the on, on the networking, and therefore we introduce um, a mock for the API client we are about to to introduce, and this is of time mock API client, and you might have heard that you can't. Um, mock in, in Swift. This is true, so you can't, no, it's not true. You, you can't use um, classes or, or uh, frameworks like OC mock to create your, mo to, to let them create the mocks for you. You have to create them yourself. And we do this here. We add an extension to our test class. And what we can do in Swift is we can Within a class, we can define another class, and we do this here. We define a class, which is mock rp client. And this should conform to a protocol that isn't um, present at the moment. But we want to have the same the same surface. So the mock API client should have should have the same surface API surface as our real API client. And um, now the, the 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 code still doesn't compile, so we still have a failing test, or we have a failing test at the moment. So we need to write code. We add here a class, or no, a, a protocol first. Uh, what did I do? Swift file, yeah. Um, and this is called um, RP client. And we add the protocol. And just don't define anything, it's just a protocol we will fill in later on. And now when we compile again, this code, yeah. Oh, so wait a minute, the test, we don't want to test, we just want to compile because otherwise we have the... Hmm. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, now we have the mock API client, we want to set it to the, to the SUT, we want to insert the dependency of the API client into our system under test. And therefore we assume it has a property that's called API client. And this is then set to mock API client. And this again will fail. Um, let me just, I want to disable this test because of the, of the network. Um, maybe I also made the, a, a mistake, but I don't know, it doesn't work, so I want to disable it. And disabling it um, is possible by just add an X in front of the test, because the test runner searches for all the methods that start with test. Uh, if I add an X, sorry? You can disable it where the, um, the red warning... No, I can't disable it. I could disable it in the um, scheme.
mean here? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, nice. <laughs> I see. Okay, didn't know that. Nice. Okay, I add an X because yeah. right now the, the UI doesn't uh, respond. But it's a trap. Yeah, just Sorry? If you forget to re-enable it, it doesn't run. And yeah. yeah. Okay, now we have set the API client and um, Xcode already complains we don't have an API client in our SUT. So we need to, to write code to make the test green again. It's now, right now it's red, we have to add code. And we do this by at a point where we can inject our dependency. And this is done by a lazy variable. And it should be of type RP client protocol, but in the production, so if you don't set it from outside, what we do in the test, but if we don't set it, we want to have a, a default um, class here. So we write here RP client. It isn't there at, uh, at the moment, so we, ha we need to add it to, to be able to um, further write uh, our code. So we add here a struct. And it is of type RP client protocol. That's all we need. <coughs> So now we have a way to inject our dependency in the test, to use something else in the test to do the network calls. And this is the way to get rid of the network um, communication to, to do the, the testing in line. And um, let's move on. We now have injected our dependency. We want to call the, the, the method, search bar button clicked. This is our local search bar. And we want to assert, what I want to, to know is, or what I want to make sure is, that the method, um, the load user method, I haven't written down at the moment, but I expect a load user method in the, in the RP client. And I want that the load user, user method in the, in the test just um, stores the search um, I have given in. So I can, uh, I would like to write something like this, XC test assert, um, mock RP client, username is equal to what I've put into the search field. And it will complain because mock RP client doesn't have a username, so let's add it. <coughs> and now I have to add the, 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 the method I expect to be called when doing the search. This is um, just a function load users and when we use the um, AP guidelines of Swift 3 it should be something like with uh, search, no, matching, matching s sorry search string and we also want to have a completion handler that is called when the actual um, uh, um, communication with the with the RP, uh, with the github rp is, is finished so yeah, we need to come yeah you're right thanks completion and this should have users so it uses and an error. Both optional because we don't know if we get errors or we get users. <coughs> we don't have any return type. And in the test, we just want to set the search th string to the username because we want to assert that this actually happened, um, that this method was called when we called the search bar, search button clicked in, uh, on the system under test. Yeah. So. And we now have user 
name is equal to search string. And if we run it right now, the, this would work because we have, first of all, we have to add this method to our RP protocol, but because we expect it to be there. This way, the Xcode will now complain that the RP client itself doesn't implement this, this method. So let's add it here as well with an empty implementation. And when we now run the test, it should fail because we want to start with a failing test. Yeah. Good boy. <clears throat> okay, we have a failing test because we haven't changed anything in the code to, um, yeah, we, we just had the fail, we, we just assumed that load users got called but it, it doesn't get called, so we have a failing test. We want to drive the implementation of the calling of this method in uh, our code. So we go back to the code and add here at the end. I, just, I don't change anything of, of, of what is there at the moment. I just want to make sure that this method is called. So I call here AP client load users. And I put in here the string of the search bar. And this is an optional, so I have to unwrap it. You see, this is, sorry, you can't see it. I think I just put it higher up. This is bad code because um, something is, no, it's okay. This is bad code because we don't want to have ex exclamation marks in your Swift code. But at the moment it's, it's, it is okay because I don't want, I only want to get the test green. Afterwards, I will try to make this code prettier, but at the moment I just want to get the passing test. And here in the implementation, right now I don't have to do anything to make this test pass. And therefore it's enough. Okay. Now we have proven that we call load view, no, not proven, we have a test that makes sure that load users, user is called in um, search bar, search button clicked. <clears throat> the, the live coding part is finished here because I don't have any, t not, I, I don't have time anymore, but the next step would be what I would do. I would put in all this code into this method. Then make sure that the test I have written before, that makes sure that I get two results from my um, search string, that it still works. Then I would write or would add um, a test class for the RP client and make sure that this does what it, what, what it should do. And uh, further on, split up this really bad code into smaller parts where I can put all this serialization and all this exclamation marks where I can just make sure that um, if there is an error, when, when, I, when I write a test and I put in, for example, a search bar without any text, then this would crash right now. And I want to write a test that makes sure that it won't crash. And th this would be the next steps to make this all good code and tested code. <clears throat> so this, this is all for the live coding part. Let's move back to the um, keynote. <clears throat> So why, want to, why want, do, do you want to write unit tests? You might already have seen um, in the demo why it's a, it's a good idea, or you might also have a, an idea why it is the case, but I want to just highlight the, 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 the points that are most important for me. When you write unit tests, you get fast feedback. It's, it, it doesn't matter where in the hierarchy the, 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 the view controller is I want to test, or the module uh, is on screen I want to test. I just can run the test and it tests immediately. In this case, when I would start here in my application, I would have, uh, I would have to go down there to, to actually see on screen what's happening and to test it with manual tapping on the screen. So um, with unit tests, you get faster feedback. Then when you have um, 
more, uh, oh, no, not this, this is not complicated, but when you have complicated UIs, you have many edge cases. What happens if name is nil, or uh, if name is 200 characters long, or if the phone number isn't a phone number, and all that, all these cases you would have to test by hand by hammering in some numbers and some, some text, and uh, when you do it in unit tests, you can just write 20 tests and they run in under a second. They just um, make sure that everything works what, what should work in this, in this view. Then you, when you search for fix again on GitHub in your preferred um, um, search, uh, search engine, <coughs> and you get, in this case, I don't know if you can read it, it's 175,000 uh, um, results. On Google it's more. So um, they put fix again in their um, commit messages. So this means that they had code running, they did something uh, on the code and it broke. And I think you have seen it as well. I have seen it a lot. You, you, you get a bug and you, and, and you think, I have seen this bug some time ago. And if you had a unit test that makes sure that this bug doesn't come back, then you won't see this bug as, as long as you run your test regularly. So, but why TDD? <coughs> TDD stands for Test Driven Development. Um, when you do TDD, your uh, code automatically becomes testable. That's the point. You write the test first and you have to write the code that it fits to the test. So the, the code becomes testable. Another point is your code becomes more modular, mod modular because um, modular code is easier to test. And we are lazy. We try to make it easy for us. So our code becomes more modular. You get a high test coverage because you are only allowed to write production code when you have a failing test. So both of this code should be covered by a test. You can refactor actually, and we all know when we try to run refactor in Xcode with Swift, we get this nice pop-up, this is not possible, blah, blah, blah. And um, when you have a test suite that tests most of your code and makes sure that the critical parts work, you can do anything in refactoring as long as the tests afterwards still work. And, and uh, what, one, one other, um, important uh, thing, in, in my opinion, is you have a live documentation how your module, how the API of your model should be used. And um, people coming to your project can see in the, in the tests how those, uh, how, how those API, APIs are supposed to be used. So um, there are some things you have to keep in mind. Tests aren't a silver bullet, bu bullet especially when, you've, when you are the person who writes the test and the code that makes the test pass. When you have um, some, some misunderstanding of the prob problem domain or when you don't get the requirements right, then this will be wrong in the test and in the code. So keep in mind, this is, you don't write um, bug-free code when using unit tests or test-driven development. At the beginning, you are slower because you write more code. You have to get into the thinking about tests. So you get into the mood about how can I test this? And this takes some time. <coughs> and um, together with that, you have a training curve. You have to just get into the mood of um, switching from tests to, to production code all the time. So um, there is some cost. You have to keep that in mind, but you can start easy, I think. You can just use the three rules by Uncle Bob and start writing tests right now, in my opinion. That's all from me. Thank you. Oh. All right. Do we have one question? Um, all right. Just wait for the mic. Hi, uh, just a quick ask. The next part will be interesting are the uh, binding it in continuous integration server, yes. like Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, do you have any experience in it? 
what I have used, but just on, on testing purposes, um, is Xcode Server. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not that stable. We had, I, I think it's better with the new Xcode Server, but we had the problem that it all the time lost the signing identities and all that stuff, so it couldn't sign our code anymore. Um, I have also heard of, but I, I have worked with Jenkins, but it's a long time ago, so I'm, I'm not sure, but it should, should, be, um, should be doable with Jenkins or Xcode Server. And the new Xcode Server is way better, so my hope is that this problems uh, fade away. Okay. I will have to find those mics. There's a there is always a mic laying around. Another question, uh, but really quickly, and then, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, thank you for the talk. I have a short and a long question. I'll ask the short one now and the longer one afterwards. So the yes. short one is, Th thank you. how many people in the room are uh, using TDD right now? Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't remember who was first. Short, please. Uh, Is the mic on? Is it on? Well, the question was so how many people are using TDD themselves? Do I get this right? They only write tests themselves and write the code themselves. Yeah. 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 Ganz aus, natürlich, oder was? Yeah, sure. There's also one way, one one really good way to 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 write tests is in pair programming. One writes the test, the other one the code, and then they switch around. Yeah, but then it means I have to work with colleagues. No, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. More of a problem for them to have to work with me than the <laughs> other way around. But uh, um, yeah, go ahead. What kind of coverage is intended by the tests? It doesn't matter. It's, it's, so my 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 um, my point is here that I have to be I, I have to sleep well. That's the point. So I have to be confident that the code I write does what it does. And the coverage doesn't matter. I can, you, you can have a high coverage and bad cast tested code. Or you, have, or you can have a, a low coverage and um, a, a good test. So coverage is just a number. Don't, don't put in some, some boundaries on we, we have to more than 90% or something like that. You have to be confident that this test works. This is my, my, my goal. Thanks, Dom. It was awesome. Let's take a short break, like 10 minutes, and give him an amazing round of applause.